Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Mike. I'm a doctor working in California and co-founder of RemNote. This is another video from our series on evidence-based learning strategies, where Maddie and I take the research in cognitive and neuroscience and help you apply it to your studies to get better grades. So if that's something you're into, definitely subscribe for weekly videos. Today, we're talking about the science of note-taking. And since we built RemNote, you know that I'm excited about this topic. The first point I wanna to touch on is whether or not you should even take notes. To take or not to take. We've all had that professor who tells us to not take notes during lecture and to just sit and actively listen. Well, studies by Cura and Romani both demonstrate that students who take notes, either from lectures or from reading their textbook, perform better compared to students who don't take notes. So they suggest that taking notes helps form new pathways in the brain that are beneficial for long-term memory. And interestingly, this third study by Nye and Crooks showed that the quantity of notes the student takes also correlated with better results on both multiple choice and essay tests. But I would take that with a grain of salt because it's hard to compare the quality of notes from someone who takes a lot versus someone who doesn't take very many. And this is the general theme of today's video that you can't just take all the research at face value because note-taking varies from person to person and depends on many factors. For example, what kind of subject are we talking about? Is it math or science or is history? Some are heavy on concepts and some have a lot more facts to memorize. Another example is the professor. Some professors give you their own notes, some professors give you PowerPoints, some professors give you half-completed notes and have you work to fill in the rest. And finally, some students are just better at taking notes than others. So these are all factors that we can't control, and so the research isn't always clear cut. I would argue that there isn't one absolute best way to take notes, but there are ways to optimize note taking to fit your personal needs. To do this, we have to define how notes actually fit into our study plan. Note taking consists of two steps. Step one is actually taking the notes, and step two is using the notes to study. Step one is important because taking notes while listening to lecture can really improve your comprehension or understanding of the information, regardless of whether you actually review those notes. But step two is equally important because having good notes to study from will make it easier to commit them to memory later. So now that we understand the bigger picture of note taking, let's answer this question. What is the best device to use when taking notes? You got the traditional handwritten notes with pen and paper, you got digital notes on a tablet or iPad with a stylus, and you got digital notes typed on a keyboard. There have been tons of studies going back and forth on whether you should handwrite your notes or type your notes. These studies by Mueller and Oppenheimer showed that handwriting was better, but these studies by Bowie and Fiorella showed that typing your notes were better. A study by Moorhead and Zinlowski even distinguished handwritten on paper versus handwritten digital notes and the results showed not much difference. Well, unfortunately, each study has its limitations, as pointed out by Luo and Cura, showing us how difficult it really is to determine a true winner. But in this study, they made a very important point, that notes can be effective based on whether or not you actually review them. And this is key, because remember that taking notes during lecture helps you understand the material, but having good notes after lecture makes studying easier. So right off the bat, I would personally not go for pen and paper anymore. The obvious reason is that it's highly inconvenient using paper and notebooks for storage and management. But the main two reasons are that A, you don't have a search function, so you can't just use Command F to quickly search for specific key terms and phrases, and B, you can't quickly insert images. With technology, you can quickly take a picture of the board or screen and add it to your digital notes right there and then. All these reasons point to digital notes having less friction for you to study afterwards. The disadvantages of pen and paper are inescapable, but the disadvantages of digital notes can be overcome. One of the biggest problems with using technology in the classroom is that you are prone to distractions from the internet and social media but you can use apps to block these distractions or you can go into airplane mode. If you have the discipline to be watching our study videos, then I'm confident that you have the discipline to avoid these distractions. The other big disadvantage is that many students fall into the trap of just typing out what the professor is saying verbatim. This is passive learning and you aren't processing the information. And it mainly happens to students who haven't decided on a note-taking method. So 
pick one. You got Cornell Notes, the Outline Method, Charting, and numerous others. There is no one single best choice, but if you pick a few and practice and get good at them, then you're less likely to be transcribing your lectures verbatim. So laptop versus iPad. Well, it's kind of up to you, but the more important question is, what are you gonna do with those notes after lecture? How do you transition to step two when you have to study your notes and commit them to memory? Well, if you've seen our other videos, the best study strategies according to science are quizzing, spacing, and mixing it up. And the best way to use these strategies is through flashcards. Well, the problem with flashcards is that making them can take up a lot of time. But flashcards are just so powerful that we would just have to suck it up and do it anyway. That is until we built Remnote, the first smart notes tool that applies science to your studies. Remnote was built to cover the entire note taking process, both step one and step two. You can take notes like any other standard note taking app, but Remnote is the only one that automatically generates flashcards from the notes that you took, saving you a ton of time. The flashcards have built in space repetition, and we even made a video right here showing you how you can use handwritten notes by combining Remnote with GoodNotes. Remnote is free to use and is definitely my favorite way of taking notes. So in summary, the ideal way to take notes is to have a system that will A, help you understand the material, and B, help you study the material. And Remnote is a tool that was built to help guide you through both phases. If you like this video, we'd really appreciate it if you can share it with other students. For the next video in this series, we're gonna cover how to learn material for the first time using a science-based approach. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified when we post that video. Check out this video over here if you wanna learn more about what study strategies to avoid if you don't wanna waste your time, and you can find the complete playlist right here. If you wanna chat, just follow us on Twitter or Instagram and send us a message. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.